I remember when I was younger, the world seemed more structured and proper. And, and it was a thing against which I could rebel. And now it's like, it's a puddle. And it's like, I got to help rebuild it so that I can rebel properly, if that makes sense. <laughs> because it, I don't know, I don't know any better way to put it than that. Like it needs to be rebuilt so that I have something to throw rocks at because right now I just feel lost. <laughs> Watered by sorrowful tears, he unknowingly sprouts. His delicate head rears, the will of future he touts. A hope from the lost. Belief is a nexus of humanity. Communication is nebulous. Like two drunken people trying to find each other in an echoing forest, shrouded by fog. We talk past each other over each other and through each other it is so hard to understand we are all unreliable narrators we neither convey reality accurately to each other nor to ourselves we simply cannot it is too complex under the weight of infinity however we believe what we believe about what we believe this is how we navigate that complexity. However, belief is not absolute truth. It is just a lens. A lens that can be molded, adapted, or destroyed. Destruction is the worst. I think I know things, but I do not. Yet, I must take it on faith for the ought. When Nietzsche declared God dead, he could see the cracks in that unifying lens. Now, it has been shattered into countless pieces. We each pick up a fleck of this shattered lens, a fleck just big enough to see ourselves. This feels like individuation, approaching solipsism. If knowledge is power, then God am I? If you believe that, I've got a bridge you can buy. Frameworks of knowledge, delicate things. Don't look too close, as one faithfully clings. To say God is dead, is to say the god lens shattered into disunited moral decay. Nisha wrote cynical, condescending words about morality. He acted as if he believed himself above it. He seemed to combat his fear by writing morality off as weakness of spirit and religion as exhaustion. But he was kidding himself. A painful burn is for what I yearn in these thickets of blighted earth. In ash I'll find what's left behind, and I hope that thing is mirth. This post-truth era Nietzsche sought was a paradoxical attempt to step backwards into the future. He wanted to resuscitate dying unity by making a Kantian push at reinventing religion. However, he went insane when the facade of his power politics came crashing down around him. As he tried to save a horse from its savage beating, what is my horse? What once was could be undone in a flash, and all the things you knew only a splash. Just ripples on the abyss of the infinite. Now you're awash with curiosity like an infant. Unachievable, absolute, materialistic proof is not the answer. Disunited, solipsistic diversity of belief is not the answer. Dialistic YOLO consumerism is not the answer. Extreme partisan power politics is not the answer. I write them stories about themselves. And I will read to them if I have to. Here I sit, retreated into self. The book of me sitting on a shelf. When I when I let my wife read that, that thing that I sent to you, mm -hmm. at the end of it, she says, it sounds like you're trying to create a new religion. And uh, I, you know, I kind of laughed it off, but like, I think somewhere in my subconscious, like I'm trying to, to get everybody back. Oh, well, you want me to pray for you? Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely not gonna turn it down. I'll pray for you. Lord, you know all things. And I believe that you are the God of all providence. And that obviously strains relationships and trust when things that 
we certainly don't want to happen, things that we think shouldn't happen, happen. And we don't know what to do. And so, Lord, I pray that you would that you would be with Voth. Lord, I, I think you're I think you're using him. You're certainly working on stuff in him. And I pray, Lord, that you would continue to do this work. Afford him a peace that perhaps he has not earned. And Lord, that is that is in a sense the the reality of the Christian faith, that you afford us things that we do not earn. And you afford them to us, not because of our capacity, but because of your generosity. So I pray, Lord, that you would offer him that peace and that you would protect his children and that you would work through his dreams and his fears and his gifts and his story and uh, afford the world a better order through it. So hear my prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. I didn't realize you were going to do it just then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the funny thing about prayer is that, you know, if if you don't believe it, I'm just talking with my eyes closed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it, it freaks some people out.